This is a satellite foundation course for Gozar training on cloud products. Some of these cloud products are baseline products for Gozar and they're available in AWIPS and some are future capability products that are available now online. My name is Scott Lindstrom and I will be des describing these products that have been developed by Andy Heidegger and Mike Pavalonas from NOAA STAR, Patrick Minnis from NASA Langley, and Andy Walther from SIMS. The subject of this Gozar Baseline Products training are the different cloud products boxed in yellow. There are a lot of them, and some, especially the Cloud Mask, have a big influence on other products. Learning objectives for this training are listed on the left. You'll learn which ABI bands are used for the products, how the products are produced, there is a specific order, the temporal and spatial resolution, and some sample uses and limitations. Gozar Baseline products are listed on the right. These are the products that will be available in AWIPS. Future Capabilities products are also described in this training. You can find Baseline and Future Capability products online. This flowchart shows the order in which the products are computed. Cloud Mask is computed first, then Cloud Type and Phase, then Cloud Top Parameters, and then Cloud Optical Properties. If you see something suspicious in a cloud product, or in a product that might rely on cloud clearing, step one should be to examine the cloud mask. It's not perfect and it can cause errors in downstream predictions. In the case above, if cloud masking is wrong, it can introduce errors into every variable within the dashed red box. To repeat, there is an order to how the cloud products are created. Each builds on its predecessor and requires information from the predecessor. Cloud products for this training module were created using this reference image. The false color image on the left uses 0.65 micron and 11 micron imagery, and the 11 micron brightness temperature shown on the right. There are multiple cloud levels and types in the image, as you might expect with a fully developed mid-latitude cyclone. The cloud mask is first in the production suite. There are four categories as listed at the bottom. Clear, probably clear, probably cloudy, and cloudy. There's also a binary clear cloudy mask. The cloud mask is computed every 15 minutes for both full disk and conus domains, and it's computed every five minutes for meso domains. It has two kilometer resolution and seeks evidence of clouds having assumed a clear field of view. It is produced out to a solar zenith angle of 70 degrees. There are known limitations with the cloud mask, chiefly at high zenith angles, over warm clouds, and in coastal regions or near the terminator, which is the divide between day and night. Which Gozar bands are used to create the ABI cloud mask? The visible 0.64 microns, the cirrus channel at 1.4 microns, and the ice channel at 1.6 microns are the visible and near-infrared channels used. The infrared channels used are the 3.9 micron, the low-level water vapor at 7.3 microns, the 8.4 micron channel, and the 11.2 and 12.3 micron channels. Cloud mask is computed up to a solar zenith angle of 70 degrees, which is shown graphically here for the goes west and goes east locations. Some cloud products computed subsequent to cloud mask are not computed all the way out to a solar zenith angle of 70 degrees. They cut off at 62 degrees or 65 degrees. Once cloud mask is computed, cloud type as shown here can be computed. Cloud type is a future capability product. It is not baseline, but it is used by other products. Cloud type is a way to identify cloud layers and cloud types. The baseline product associated with cloud type is cloud phase. Cloud type is produced every 15 minutes for the full disk domain and every five minutes for both conus and meso domains. It's computed out to a local zenith angle of 65 degrees and only uses infrared bands, 7.3, 8.4, 11.2, and 12.3 microns, to avoid day-night discontinuities that would arise if reflectance bands were used. The baseline product cloud phase, which falls out of cloud type, includes four separate categories, warm liquid water clouds, supercooled liquid water clouds, mixed phase clouds, and ice phase clouds. Cloud Top Height, a baseline product very useful for aviation, is computed hourly for full disk and conus domains, and every five minutes for the meso domains. For full disk and conus domains, the product has a 10 kilometer resolution. 
A 5x5 five five pixel footprint is used and the best 2 kilometer pixels within that footprint give information. In the meso domain there is 4 kilometer resolution. A 2x2 two two pixel footprint is used. Height is computed using bands 14, 15, and 16 from Gozar ABI, that's the 11, 12, and 13 microns, and it requires the cloud mask and the cloud phase. It does not necessarily give a good answer with Thin Cirrus. Thin Cirrus is a problem for many cloud products. Cloud top pressure, a baseline product that is also used in aviation, is derived simultaneously with cloud top height and cloud top temperature. It has 10 kilometer resolution at full disk and conus domains, in which domains it is computed hourly, and 4 kilometer resolution in meso domains, in which domain it is computed every 5 minutes. This is the same temporal cadence and horizontal resolution as cloud top height. Forecast model temperature profiles convert cloud top temperature computed to cloud top pressure and cloud top height. ACHA variables are computed using bands 14, 15, and 16, that is 11, 12, and 13 microns on Gozar's AVI. Cloud top temperature is also baseline, and it's a product that is used in other products because it generally gives a more accurate value than individual channel values. It is computed in concert with cloud top height and cloud top pressure as part of the ABI cloud height algorithm, or ACHA. The temporal cadence and horizontal resolution is shown. It's computed using the three longest wavelength bands on ABI, 14, 15, and 16, that is the 11.2, 12.3 and 13.3 micron channels. And here's a reason why you might want to use a temperature product. Which band would you use for a cloud top temperature? There are four good window channels on ABI. Which one is best? The 10.3 and 11.2 micron channels shown here, well, look at the cold cloud top circled in yellow. It's a slightly different temperature in both channels. If you need a threshold temperature for an algorithm, for example, this can make a difference. In addition, if you're looking at brightness temperatures, it's hard to compare current GOES window channel to the future ABI channels because the width of the heritage channel is different than the width of the ABI channels. Central wavelengths are different as well. Here's another example that shows brightness temperatures for four window channels on Himawari for a developing cumulonimbus cloud, the region circled. Brightness temperature values are close but not exact. If you're using a threshold of 200 Kelvin, for example, the values are on either side. Brightness temperatures differ by 2 to 3 Kelvin as you go from 8.6 to 10.4 to 11.2 to 12 microns. Note that the cleanest window, the 10.4 microns, is the warmest, as expected. This is the same scene, but 10 minutes later. Cloud top temperatures have cooled. Again, temperatures in the window channel at cloud top differ by about 2 to 3 Kelvin as you go from 8.6 to 10.4, to 11.2, to 12.4 microns. Note that the delta T values showing cooling are fairly similar though, all within about 0.3 Kelvin. Cloud optical depth is a baseline product computed using different algorithms in the day and at night. Cloud optical depth is computed every 15 minutes in the full disk and conus domains, and every 5 minutes in the meso domains. Horizontal resolution is 4 kilometers for full disk, but 2 kilometers for conus and meso domains. It is computed up to a solar zenith angle of 65 degrees. The daytime algorithm uses the visible band, 2.64 microns, and the cloud particle size band, 6, 2.25 microns. The algorithm requires cloud mask, cloud phase, and cloud height as input. Cloud optical depth, or COD, is similar to the aerosol optical depth, AOD, that is computed in the absence of clouds, and it's used to estimate cloud thickness, icing threats, and precipitation. Cloud optical depth at night is infrared only. Like the daytime reflectance-driven product, it is computed every 15 minutes in the full disk and conus domains, and every 5 minutes in the meso domain. Horizontal resolution is 4 kilometers for full disk, and 2 kilometers for conus and meso, and it's not computed for a solar zenith angle exceeding 65 degrees. This product is computed using the shortwave IR channel, band 7, 3.9 microns, the window band 14, 11.2 microns, and the dirty window band 15, 12.3 microns. The product can be used to estimate cloud thickness and cloud bases, but it has little skill for low clouds. Cloud particle size considers all pixels identified as cloud by the cloud mask. 
cloud particle size represents the cloud droplet distribution. This is a baseline product. This daytime only product is computed for the full disk domain every 15 minutes at 4 km resolution and at the CONUS and MESO domains every 5 minutes at 2 km resolution. It is computed using the visible channel band 2, 0.64 microns, and the cloud particle size channel band 6, 2.2 microns. If you combine cloud particle size with cloud optical depth, you can estimate the cloud mass. Also, large water droplets in boundary layer clouds will likely be precipitating. There is also a cloud particle size product computed at night using infrared imagery. Like the daytime product, values are computed over the full disk domain every 15 minutes at 4 km resolution, and over the CONUS and MESO domains every 5 minutes at 2 km resolution. The product uses the shortwave infrared channel band 7, 3.9 microns, the window channel band 14, 11.2 microns, and the dirty window channel band 15, 12.3 microns. This product has difficulty detecting large particles and low clouds, but it should be used as a complement to the daytime product. Cloud Water Path is not a Gozar baseline product, but it is computed along with cloud optical depth and particle size, and you can view it online. This is a daytime-only reflectance-based product derived from the visible channel band 2, 0.64 microns, and the cloud particle size channel band 6, 2.25 microns. It combines both the liquid water path and ice water path parameters, and is computed every 15 minutes in the full disk domain at 4 km resolution, and every 5 minutes in the CONUS and MESO domains at 2 km resolution. This property is computed under the assumption of adiabatic vertical, con vertical conditions within a cloud. Cloud water path on the previous slide is important because when you combine it with measurements of reflectivity, you can estimate rain rate. You can find this daytime only product online. Let's switch topics to discuss fog and low stratus. The cloud products might be able to identify low clouds. A legacy nighttime method of doing that involves the brightness temperature differences between the two window channels, 10.7 microns on GOES-13, or maybe 11.2 microns channel 14 on GOES-RABI, and the shortwave infrared 3.9 microns ch channel 7 on ABI. Water-based clouds are not black body emitters of 3.9 micron radiation. Thus the brightness temperature computed from the radiance sensed by the satellite, a computation that does assume black body emission, will be colder than reality. Water-based clouds, in contrast, are more nearly black body emitters of window channel radiation, around 11 microns. So the computed brightness temperature at that wavelength is closer to reality. Taking the difference between the two values highlights water-based clouds, that is, stratus. That's shown in the color enhancement, and also in the inset that shows a cross-section from fog to cirrus. Computed brightness temperatures at 3.9 and 10.7 microns are different because of these emissivity differences. Note that cirrus temperatures are different as well because of sub-pixel effects that have been described in other satellite foundation courses for GOZAR. The problem, stratus and fog can look very similar from the top of the cloud deck. It's very hard for the satellite to view the cloud base. Because mid-level stratus aren't an important aviation hazard, not usually, the aviation-focused IFR probability field was developed to screen out regions of mid-level stratus and highlight only regions of fog on the ground. That product is shown here. Over the mid-Ohio River Valley, where the brightness temperature difference product in the previous scene had a strong signal, IFR probability is low. IFR probability low uses model output. If the model output does not show low level saturation, then it's unlikely that there is fog present. So IFR probability can screen out regions of not interesting mid-level stratus and allow a forecaster to, to direct more focus to a potential transportation hazard. Brightness temperature difference fields cannot detect low clouds in the presence of cirrus because the emissivity differences of the low clouds aren't apparent to the satellite if cirrus is blocking the view. In those cases, an example of which is, is north of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, model data can provide information about low-level saturation even when satellite data are incomplete and alert a forecaster to the potential presence of reduced visibility. 
IFR probability on the previous slide is not a baseline product, but it is a future capability product. A list of all baseline and future capability products is available at the link on this page. There are other supplemental links on this page for more in-depth information on these products. This concludes the GOZAR training on cloud products and fog detection. Thank you for listening.